Okay, now let's make a little garlic bread to go with our pasta dish while everything else is uh, finishing up. Let me show you what I have here. Have uh, pretty much the same herbs and spices and the olive oil and so the garlic, sea salt, fresh ground pepper, some olive oil, parsley flakes, Mrs. Dash, oregano, and the basil. Uh, and I'm gonna put this, I, I take a little saute pan and I put some olive oil in there. I'll show you how to do that. Saute some uh, uh, garlic, get that going, and put some of these herbs and spices in there. That And it pretty much just flavors the oil, but once the once the uh, herbs and spices have kind of uh, um, sauteed a little bit in the oil, then I'll smear a little bit of that on the bread too, and it makes it have a really uh, delicious flavor. I, I usually like uh, a nice uh, French bread like this uh, with uh, with my food. This is, uh, let's see if they call this French or Italian. They call this one French, sometimes they call it Italian. I'm not sure what the difference is. Uh, I'm sure I'll get some advice on that, but let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, I, I like it. You can see that this is bigger than my hand is wide. That's the way that I like it uh, because I like to cut nice thick uh, pieces and I like my garlic bed just crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. That's the way I love it with a nice garlicky flavor with uh, that's a little buttery tasting but the olive oil will give it that buttery flavor so uh, let's get to making it okay we got our bread out of the package and we'll just start at one end doesn't matter which end and we kind of cut it on the diagonal just a little bit that gives a little more surface area to the to the cut uh, I cut these as you can see an inch or about one knuckle uh, in, in uh, thickness that will give us a really nice tender piece of bread. And uh, I serve this with my different pasta dishes that I do, and I, and I actually do cook pasta from time to time, and I cook this version also. But uh, uh, everybody seems to love my garlic bread, so I thought I would share how I do that with you so that you would be able to make it too. So this is the size bread that that I uh, usually use and I'll buy fresh bread at the store uh, and you want to have it fresh you can use a, a stale loaf if that if you have that but the bread ends up being much uh, crunchier and crispier almost like a giant crouton uh, if that's what you like then then let your bread go stale a little bit and cook it and you'll have giant crouton okay now let's uh, get over here in front of the stove. You can see I've already turned the burner on so that it's nice and hot. Sorry, excuse my shoulder. Uh, so that it's nice and hot already. Uh, we'll put our little skillet on here and we'll turn this down already. And this little skillet right here, it will get hot like really fast. We'll put just about a quarter of an inch of oil in the pan to start with and you will see the little ripple forming in the bottom of the pan almost immediately to indicate that it's heating up. And you will see that it looks like it's cracking or getting wrinkles in it at the bottom of the pan that as it's heating up. You drop that in, you want to hear that sizzle when you, uh, when you put your uh, garlic in there. Uh, because this is a very quick process. Uh, let's get some salt in there. Let's get some basil. That was about a teaspoon of basil. About a teaspoon of oregano. Keep that moving. One of the things you don't want to do is scorch your garlic. It gets very bitter. When, when you scorch the garlic and uh, it's unpleasant. Full teaspoon of the parsley flakes. Get some Mrs. Dash in there. Fresh ground pepper, of course. And get your basil. And all these ingredients I'm putting in about one teaspoon of course, you saw what I did with the uh, with the pepper, and I didn't put very much salt in there, so I do want to put a little bit more. 
about a full teaspoon of that as well. So let's give that a little stir. We'll turn our burner off. Don't need that heat anymore. We've got plenty of heat to finish what we're doing here. And uh, that's what you uh, that's what you have. Uh, you know your your herbs and spices and everything have uh, have kind of given up their last remaining oils and flavors into the into the uh, in, into the olive oil to flavor it. Now, let me move the camera. Sorry about the shaking. Let me get rid of the cord. Um, all right, I, uh, you saw me uh, cut the bread. So here it is, I have it on the pan and I usually just slip the uh, saute pan on it and I use a pastry brush. Uh, I found the best way to do this. Pull it over close to your uh, saute pan and I made an error. Let me go back and correct the error because now I have concentrated flavor in my saute pan but I don't have enough oil and I, I need to put some more oil in the pan because we won't be able to season all of our bread. I wondered what I had done wrong. So we'll heat that up just so that get all those flavors stirred together. You can smell it coming off. So you're just wanting to put a generous amount of oil all over the cut side and as you can see I want to put some of those herbs and spices put it right on the bread like that and just leave that that way flip that over and do the other side that one's ready I did wash my hands just before I started here so uh, as I have said always safety in the kitchen Clean hands, clean utensils, clean pans, clean working surface areas so that you don't cross-contaminate your food or dishes. Um, keeping a clean kitchen is very important, not just for yourself, but it's disrespectful to your guests to have a, to have a, a dirty kitchen that you're preparing food you're going to give them. So keep your work area clean, whatever kind of work area that you have. It doesn't have to be large, but just keep it clean. You can see that just looks, I mean, it already looks good to me. I hope it, the picture does it justice on this, on this video because this is a favorite of my guests at my house. You may already have a delicious uh, um, Italian bread recipe that you make or you have a great Italian store in your area that makes delicious Italian bread. And if that's what you prefer to do, go right ahead. Uh, this is just a little extra bonus on this dish for those of us who at one time in our life did not have a good Italian bread recipe and we just generally poured you know powdered uh, garlic powder uh, or garlic salt or something on buttered bread and put it in the oven and we called it garlic bread uh, and that was the best we could do. This will give you a, a new alternative that I think you will enjoy. It takes a little bit more work uh, than buying garlic bread at the grocery store. But then again, the best food is homemade food. Fresh, the freshest ingredients that you can get. If you have, I've never uh, been much of a gardener. I just, I don't know what it is. Uh, some people have a green thumb. I have a brown eye. Seems like I kill more stuff than I uh, can keep alive when it comes to plants. I'm not sure why that is. Bad karma or something, I suppose. Um, but uh, 
if you're if you have a little bit of a green thumb and you'd like to start an herb garden I've been told and I've heard from a number of sources they're very easy to grow and to have fresh herbs around for your dishes uh, it does make a difference in the quality of the dish so I mean you can do what I do and get along uh, and, it, and your guests will enjoy it, but if you really want to go over the top and, and uh, really um, excel, then, then uh, uh, get some fresh herbs. You can buy them from the store, but you can grow them. Grow a little herb garden in your window in your kitchen. Just take a scissor and shear off the amount that you need, uh, and, and uh, it will make your dishes a little extra special for your family and guests. So anyway, here's our bread and I've preheated the oven to 375 degrees and we will cook this about six to seven minutes on each side just until it's, it's uh, a light golden brown uh, and it will be just crispy on the outside, tender on the inside, delicious, I assure you. Give it a try. All right, well there we go. As you can see, we have, uh, we have the meal all plated up and it's ready to be served. That's what it looks like. Nice piece of French bread. There will be some wine in this glass, of course. Here's our, here's our non-pasta pasta dish. A little fresh Parmesan cheese on there. If you're a vegan, you certainly want to leave that off. But if you're a vegetarian, might be okay. And here's our, uh, here's our nice French bread, crisp on the outside, tender on the inside. And it is a delicious meal and I hope you enjoy it.